Hello again. My name is Caroline. In the last lesson, we discussed the first category of rights laid out in the Bill of Rights, known as civil rights and liberties. These make up the first three amendments of the Bill of Rights. We also stepped back into Burgerville for the first time in quite a few lessons. Let's go back there for a moment, shall we? It turns out Cindy Sandwich's kids didn't get justice right away. No, folks, they had to go through a long and rigorous process of court battles for them to be allowed to wear those anti-factory T-shirts in school. However, due to a fair process being in place, they were able to receive justice in the end. That's because Burgerville has a smart list of legal rights put in place for their citizens. And guess what? We also share these same legal rights, and that is what we will be talking about today. Today, we will identify the legal rights contained in the Bill of Rights, and we will analyze the ways in which legal rights limit the authority of the government and empower individuals. Amendments four through seven of the Bill of Rights are called legal rights. They restrict the police powers of the government and require due process to ensure innocence before court. The types of rights involved start with the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment says that there should be no unreasonable search and seizure. States must have probable cause to obtain a warrant, and warrants must be issued by a court of law. Alert! We have three new terms to define. Let's do it. First, we have due process. Due process refers to a course of formal proceedings, such as legal proceedings, carried out regularly and in accordance with established rules and principles. Next, we have the term warrant. A warrant is a document issued by a court that gives the police the power to do something. Finally, probable cause. Probable cause is a reasonable ground for supposing that a charge is well founded used to obtain a warrant. The Fifth Amendment is the famous amendment you hear in Hollywood movies when someone says in the witness stand, "I plead the fifth." It includes the right to remain silent and requires an indictment by a grand jury for someone to stand trial. It also requires that there be no double jeopardy, meaning if someone stands trial and is found innocent, they cannot stand trial again for the same indictment at a future date. The Fifth Amendment also includes the right to due process by law, meaning the legal system must follow a strict process. Ring a ding dong, people! We have a couple more terms coming your way. The first is indictment. An indictment is a formal written statement, framed by a prosecuting authority and found by a jury, such as a grand jury, charging a person with an offense. And the second term is double jeopardy. No, this one isn't as entertaining as it sounds. Double jeopardy is the putting of a person on trial for an offense for which one has previously been put on trial under a valid charge. One case in particular highlights the importance of the Fifth Amendment. In the landmark case Miranda v. Arizona, a man named Ernesto Miranda was identified by a witness as being the person who had kidnapped and raped a woman. He was arrested and then interrogated for two hours. In the interrogation, the police managed to secure an oral and written confession from him. However, during the arrest and interrogation, Miranda was not informed of his legal rights, such as his right to remain silent or his right to an attorney. The question for the court was: Does the Fifth Amendment protect a defendant against self-incrimination during police custody? The conviction was eventually dismissed because the court found that the defendant must be informed by the police of his Fifth Amendment rights upon arrest. We now refer to these rights as Miranda rights. They are an important process that limits the government from falsely arresting and obtaining illegal confessions. It helps to tip the balance of power from the state to the people. Alert! Did you get that important term coming your way? If you missed it, Miranda rights refers to the constitutional requirement that once an individual is detained by the police, there are certain rights a police officer is required to recite to a detainee. The Sixth Amendment includes the right to a speedy and public trial in front of a jury of one's peers, and includes the right to be informed of one's charges. 
This amendment also outlines the process by which trials are to be run, stating that witnesses may be provided by the defense and that witnesses may be brought against the defense by the plaintiff. Finally, it describes the right to an attorney as well. Alarm! Okay, guys, I know. It's not that alarming when it happens all the time. But anyway, here's a new term for you. A plaintiff is a person who brings a legal action. The Seventh Amendment is an important one. It requires any case that requires over $20 to have a jury of peers. It also notably creates the right to bring a class action lawsuit against large institutions. Alert! What in the world was that term we were just talking about? Oh yeah, it was that term, class action lawsuit. A class action lawsuit, or just class action, is a procedural device that permits one or more plaintiffs to file and prosecute a lawsuit on behalf of a larger group, or class. And finally, wrapping up this section on legal rights, there is the Eighth Amendment, which makes it so that no excessive bail or fine is lodged against citizens, and no cruel or unusual punishment be exacted by courts. Phew! Well, that's good news. So as you can see, the Bill of Rights not only lays out our freedoms, but also seeks to protect those freedoms through a process of fair laws. These protections are supposed to keep Americans from being wrongfully imprisoned, tortured, and from other nasty things that had happened before and during revolutionary times. Recap! Today we learned that the Bill of Rights contains legal rights that are designed to protect the accused and limit the power of government. Legal rights led to what is known as your Miranda rights. That's it for our lesson today. Stay tuned. Next lesson, we will be covering the last two amendments of the Bill of Rights. Have a great day, and remember, vote, debate, and participate. Hey, hey.